What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my DraftKings MMA picks for UFC Vegas 83. We got Song Yudong going against Chris Gutierrez. Honey, all the wins, yeah. Harder than all that is. You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. Knocked out. You better move, you might get knocked out. And we are back talking some DraftKings. This week, we are breaking down UFC Vegas 83. We got an 11 fight card. And I'm, look, I'm looking forward to this card. We're back in the apex. I think it's going to be a very violent night. Um, looking forward to it. No complaints from me. Uh, before we get started, if you guys can please do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Be sure to check out DFSbythenumbers.com. That's where you'll find all my other content that you do not see on YouTube. Um, you got the stats, targets, projections, ownership projections, rankings. Um, DFS article, lineup optimizer, um, my prize picks targets on there as well. Lots of content on DFSbythenumbers.com. Everything's out. Um, I just posted my DFS article actually uh, prior to coming on here. So everything's out, ready to go. Be sure to check that out on DFSbythenumbers.com. And then also be sure to check out Underdog Fantasy. This video is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. If you guys want to check it out, use promo code DFSBTN. Get yourself a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. And I'll also touch on my Underdog Fantasy Play of the Week later in the show. Last week, we hit the Sean Brady higher than 1.5 takedowns. We'll see if we can keep the ball rolling uh, with my Underdog Fantasy Play this week. All right. All right, guys. We'll say we'll get into it here. Um, we're going to start with the fight. Doesn't go to decision lines. And we have... Uh, Hung Sung Park, Shannon Ross, minus 500 for the fight doesn't go to decision, which is crazy. I mean, this is a flyweight fight, but I think a lot of it has to do with the man on the screen there, Shannon Ross. I mean, Shannon Ross has been finished in both of his UFC fights on the Contender Series. Um, and both of his UFC fights lasted a little bit over a, like a minute combined. I mean, this guy's getting starched. He's getting starched early. Hence why you see the fight doesn't go to decision at this price. Um, yeah, the one thing that concerns me is Hung Sung Park is the, the highest salary on the on the board here this week. He's 9500 And yeah, he's not some murderous power puncher, but I guess you don't really need to be against Shannon Ross. But yeah, Park's more of a grappler, which I could see like a club and sub situation here. I can definitely see Park getting this fight down to the mat, working his grappling. I, I really like Park's grappling. Shannon Ross, I'm sure nobody's going to play him this week, which for me just... I don't know, I might sprinkle some Shannon Rush because I feel like skill for skill, these these fighters are a lot closer than these salaries do indicate. It's just, you know, one can take a punch and one one really can't. So a little bit of sprinkle on Shannon Ross, if anything, but I think the play here is, is absolutely Hung Sung Park. All right, next we got Kilo Roundtree going against Anthony Smith, minus 400 fight, doesn't go to decision. Yeah, I think somebody's getting served here. I lean towards Roundtree being the one doing the serving, but Anthony Smith does have a path to victory. If Anthony Smith does get this fight down to the mat, uh, really good ground game, BJJ black belt, and you know the times we have seen Roundtree taken down, it hasn't looked that great. So uh, I do lean towards Roundtree knocking out Anthony Smith in the first or second round. I don't think Smith has the best durability. I think his durability is definitely waning. It's definitely looking a lot worse. He's not reacting to punches um, that great as of late. He hasn't been looking amazing as of late. So, yeah, and, and Roundtree has. Roundtree's been on fire. He's been on a roll. He's showing consistently consistency for the first time in his career. Uh, he looks unstoppable at this moment. But, yeah, if Smith does get him down, it's, it's going to get very interesting. I lean Roundtree, but Smith's not the worst dog in the world. Next, we got a fight that was supposed to take place last week, and that is going to be uh, Steve Garcia going against Mel Costa. And yeah, I, I, I liked it last week. I, I like it this week. I liked Mel Costa, Costa last week. I like Mel Costa this week. I think somebody's getting served here as well. These guys like to do the same exact thing, and that's throw down. Steve Garcia has like five knockdowns for and like five knockdowns against in the UFC and like five fights, which is just crazy. I mean, this guy has a ton of power, but he also can't really take a shot. Mel Costa has a ton of power as well. He has a slick submission game also. If he wants to go to that, he can. I just see somebody getting finished here. I like Costa for sure. Uh, nine K. They did bump him up 100 from last week, I believe. Last week, I think he was 8,900. This week is 9,000. I don't mind the the $100 price bump up there. I still like Costa to go out there and, and get a finish here, probably in the first round. But Garcia has a ton of power in his own right, and he's not the worst dog in the world. Also, all right. Next, we got a very interesting fight here: Jung Young Park going against Andre Beniz. And we have a lot of fights on this card where it's like a striker versus grappler matchup. This being the first one. I mean, Andre Beniz. I think a lot of people are counting him out this week. Uh, after his two losses against Brendan Allen and uh, and Paul Craig, but this is a completely different matchup. Like Andre Beniz, I think he's going to go back to his his roots, and that's to grapple. I mean, this guy's a very very high level BJJ black belt, and it seems like he kind of went away from that a little bit in his last two fights, which 
I, I think we can uh, forgive him a little bit, you know, against Brandon Allen, Paul Craig, you know, guys you don't really typically want to go to the ground with. But uh, in this matchup, he is going to try to take down Andre Beniz. And if he does, I think he's live for an early sub. But if this fight does get extended, I don't like the cardio Beniz. I think uh, Park can definitely break him. And that's kind of where I'm leaning. I think Park can break him down the stretch, put up a big score, and get a late finish here. But Andre Beniz is a very live dog in that first round. All right, getting into the core plays here, Tetsura Tayara at 9,400. I, I like the matchup for him. I like this matchup for him. I think it's a good fight for him. 9,400 is it gets expensive, but Tayara can definitely go out there, put up a big score. He has take done upside, control time upside, submission upside. He's going against Carlos Hernandez, who's okay. Um, I think, obviously, Hernandez, I like the volume on the feet, but um, it's, I think the takedown defense is going to be an issue. And I don't think Carlos Hernandez has, like, terrible takedown defense. I think it's just okay. And... Since it is just okay, I mean, I feel like Tyra is going to have no problem getting this fight down to the mat. And when it does get down to the mat, I mean, Tatsura Tyra has very, very slick submission grappling. I mean, this guy's transitions are, are incredible. He's very, very dangerous. I think a sub is very live for Tatsura Tyra here at 9,400. Uh, Tim Elliott, 8,400. Very interesting fight here. I think this is probably the most interesting fight on the slate from a DraftKings perspective because Alain Nascimento was supposed to fight Sumadarji. Alain Nascimento was 9,100. Sumadarji was 7,100. In comes Tim Elliott. Sumadarji keeps his price at 7,100, which makes him very intriguing. We'll talk about him. Um, and then they set Tim Elliott at 8,400. So I do lean on the Tim Elliott side here, and I think this fight is, is borderline like must target. It's a striker versus grappler matchup. Uh, if Tim Elliott was coming in here on a full camp, I would be much, much more confident on him here. But, I mean, Tim Elliott has a serious path to victory here, and that's going to be to wrestle. Tim Elliott is averaging almost four takedowns per 15 minutes. Um, Tim Elliott has some submission ability as well. I mean, he almost caught uh, Mukhaev in a couple submissions in his last fight, and that's kind of what Sumadarji struggled with. He struggled with the ground game. Anytime somebody takes down Sumadarji, he's getting subbed. Five losses for Sumo Darji, five inside the distance. I would not be shocked if Elliott got a sub here in this matchup. With that said, though, he's coming in here on short notice. So, I mean, what's the cardio like? Has this guy been training? I mean, we don't know, and that's kind of why it's, you know, a little bit iffy. But, you know, if, as long as he's coming in here ready to go, I think it's a great matchup for him. Uh, Jung Young Park, 8,800. Another fight I think should be, you know, borderline must target, um, especially on like an 11-fight slate here. Jung Young Park, I mean, his volume is just incredible. He's one of those guys that just breaks you with the, the volume, the pressure, the pace. He's got back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back finishes, looking good, looking uh, the best he's really ever had as of late. Obviously, this is going to be a, a tough test, I'd, I'd say, at least early on. He's going to have to survive some ground exchanges here, which I think is, is very much on the table. And as long as Muniz does not sub him in the first round, I think Park starts to take over. I think Park really puts it on Muniz, and I can see a big score here out of Jung Young Park and a win, like a second or third round finish. So I do like Park quite a bit, but Muniz does have that first round upside. And then uh, Khalil Roundtree, we talked about him a little bit, 8,900. I just like how he's looking lately. I mean, he has a ton of momentum. Uh, the best he's ever looked. I mean, the best Roundtree's ever looked. He's finally showing consistency. Like, Roundtree's one of these guys where, you know, some days he'd show up, some days he, he, he wouldn't. Um, but he's rattling off like a, a nice win streak, like four wins in a row for Roundtree. We don't typically see that. And Roundtree's a finisher. Like when he's winning fights, he's finishing fights. All of his wins in the UFC have come by knockout outside of the Dustin Jacoby win, which I, I kind of thought he lost that fight. So in my opinion, I think if Roundtree does win, it is probably a knockout and it is probably within the first 10 minutes. So yeah, Roundtree 8900. I like it. I like the matchup. You know, Smith coming in here on short notice. As long as he keeps it upright, I think he styles on Smith here in this matchup. All right, moving on to the GBP place here. Hung Sung Park, 89, or 9,500. It's got to be talked about. I mean, he's going against Shannon Ross. Um, you know, I think Park can knock him out, probably. I think he can submit him, probably. I am leaning towards, like, a submission. I think a club and sub is kind of where I'm leaning. But, yeah, I mean, he's going against Shannon Ross, who just has not shown any durability to speak of. I mean, he's shown just the worst durability imaginable, getting finish in back-to-back -back fights, both under 60 seconds. And one of those fights was against Jesus Aguilar, which just still, to me, does not make sense. Aguilar had, like, the, the smallest reach in the in, in the men's division, the men's flyweight division. And then also, that was Jesus Aguilar's first knockout. So, I mean, yeah, he can't take a punch. And, you know, Park probably does finish him. Park inside the distance is, like, minus 330, something like that. So, yeah, you got to play Park. you got to play Park. I don't love the price, but you got to play him. Song Yudong, 9,200. Yeah, I, I like I like Song Yudong here. Um, I think there's a lot of reasons to like Song Yudong here. I think there's a lot of reasons to go up there and play him at 9,200. You got uh, volume. You got five rounds. You got power. You got 
I think even wrestling could come into play here for Song Kadong if he wants it as well. And yeah, it's kind of a step down. Like I, this, this matchup doesn't make a ton of sense to me outside of, I think Chris Gutierrez is stepping in on like somewhat short notice. I forget who Song Yudong was supposed to fight, but yeah, other than that, you know, this is a, should be a really winnable fight for Song Yudong. I don't really see Chris Gutierrez out him across 25 minutes. I don't really see Chris Gutierrez knocking him out. I just think Song Yudong has a lot more ways to win this fight. I think it could be a, a five round decision, which I think would score well. And I also could see like a Song Yudong late knockout, which again, I think would score well. So yeah, I think Song Yudong is a very good play this week at 9,200. Uh, Mel Costa, 9,000. We talked about him a little bit. Yeah, Costa, lots of power. Very sneaky submission game as well. This guy, Costa, has a lot of subs on his record. Wouldn't be shocked if he tried to go to the ground game here, but I think primarily these guys are going to stand and bang until one man falls, and one guy has durability, that's Costa, and one guy doesn't, and that's Steve Garcia. So Garcia's been knocked down five times, including three knockdowns against like Charlie Ontiveros. Just not a, a great look whatsoever. So yeah, I think Costa lands a big shot here and potentially even finishes him in the first round. I think it potentially comes early here, and at 9,000, I like it. Nazareth Hack Press, 8,700. Um... You know, if, if this was a 12-fight slate, 13-fight slate, I probably wouldn't be touching Hack Brass here, but it's a small slate. I think it's going to be very low-owned, and I love the volume of Hack Brass. He has power. It's just the power's not really been translating to knockouts yet in the UFC. I'm not sure if it's going to happen, and I'm not sure if it's going to happen this fight, but if it's going to happen, I mean, against Jamie Malarkey would be the time, right? Like, Jamie Malarkey, I don't like a strike in defense. He blocks punches with his face. He doesn't have the best chin. He's getting dropped in every fight. If Hack Brass wins by knockout I don't really think it would shock anybody but if he does win by knockout and he puts up a lot of volume like he can go out there and potentially break the slate so I think he's low owned I don't hate it but I also don't love it um, but yeah if he knocks out Malarkey I think he scores very well all right and then uh the underdog play of the week if you guys want to check an underdog highly recommend it uh use highly recommend it use promo code DFSBTN 100% deposit match up to $100 it helps me it helps you it's free money check it out uh, last week, we hit the Sean Brady higher than uh, 1.5 takedowns. This week, we are going to hit the Tatsura Tayara lower on the 47.5 significant strikes. I think the game plan is simple. Get this fight down to the mat. Hernandez can't stuff a takedown. And once it hits the mat, Tyra's submission grappling is incredible. Super slick. I think he finds a sub here within the first two rounds. I like this less. I don't think Tyra's going to go out there and, and try to test his striking. It's not something he does. It's not something he should do. If he does that, he probably loses. So, yeah, I, I think he gets a fight down to the mat and finds a sub, and I think this lower hits. If you want to check that out, again, promo code DFSBTN. Live dogs, a couple of them here. Uh, Song Kanan, 7,700. Yeah, I'm picking him outright, actually. I think it's a close fight, though. I like the price tag, though. I mean, Song has solid volume. Kevin Jusay, I, I don't think he has solid volume. Kevin Jusay, I think, is very hittable. He was actually getting pieced up by Kiefer Crosby in his last fight up until Kiefer Crosby gassed. And, yeah, I think Song's live to either, you know, hurt him a couple times, uh, maybe out-volume him across t uh, 15 minutes, or maybe in a knockout. Like, Song Yudong can crack. Song Yudong has a lot of power. Like, a knockout could be in play here. It's just Kevin Jusay is very tough. So, either way, I think Song Yudong is a very live dog here, and I think if he wins, he puts up a solid score. Next, we got Stephanie Egger, 7,600. I like Egger here in, in what I think is a very close fight. I mean, this salary doesn't make a ton of sense to me. I feel like both these fighters are super similar. Both fighters have a BJJ black belt. Both fighters have a judo black belt. Both fighters aren't the best strikers in the world. I know Santos' striking looked incredible against Juliana Miller, but, you know, so would Egger. So, um, yeah, I think this fight plays out close. I, and I like Egger's size. I like, you know, th I think Edgar can definitely get takedowns here. We've seen Santos make mistakes on the mat. We've seen her get controlled on the mat. I think Edgar can definitely do that. And she's only 7,600, so I don't mind some Edgar at this price tag. Uh, Muniz, 7,400, first-round submission upside. I mean, if he wins this fight, I think it's early. Multiple first-round submissions in the UFC. He's taken on Jung Young Park, who has been sub before. So, yeah, I mean, there's going to be opportunities there. I mean, Muniz, if he wins this fight, I think it's going to be early. I think he puts up a massive score at a very, very cheap price tag. If it does leave the first round, though, I think he's screwed, but that's not why we're playing him. We're playing him for that first round finish. And then Sumadarji, 7,100, I do think is going to be popular because he's 7,100, and then on the money line, he's like plus 110, I think. A very close line with Tim Elliott. So yeah, there's a lot of value here on Sumadarji. It's a striker versus a grappler matchup. Elliott being the grappler, Mudarji being the striker. Mudarji's a very good striker. A lot of power for the flyweight division, although this fight is at Bantamweight. And yeah, if Mudarji does win, I think it could even be by knockout. Uh, Elliott coming in here on short notice, if he's not prepared, I mean, yeah, Mudarji can knock this guy out. So I think it all comes down to, you know, 
has Elliot been training? Has Elliot um, is Elliot prepared for this fight? If not, Madardi probably sparks him. But if Elliot is coming in here, you know, somewhat ready to go, I think it is a bad matchup. But still, 7100, you can't go wrong with Sumadarji there at this price tag. Uh, pump plays, Anthony Smith, 7300. The path is there, whether he takes it or not. I'm not so sure. I personally like Roundtree to knock him out. But yeah, the path's there to, to grapple. If he does grapple, he's going to potentially win the fight, finish the fight. Like the one times we have seen Roundtree taken down. He's gotten finished um, quite a bit. Kudalaba finished him on the mat. Pedro finished him on the mat. There's been some other fights where he's getting taken down, getting controlled, right? So, yeah, Smith, if he goes out there with the right game plan, he could potentially win this fight. It's just that's not really something he does. He's not the best wrestler in the world. He doesn't have a ton of takedowns, but I guess it only takes one. So, I don't think Smith's the worst pump play in the world. Um, I will be sprinkling some, but I do like Roundtree, personally. And then fade is Kevin Jusay. 8,500. I'm not even picking him to win this fight. I don't like this price tag. I know he finished Kiefer Crosby in the first round, but so would Song Yidong. Um, I don't like the volume. I don't like the strike and defense. And uh, I think at best, he probably wins a decision here. Um, don't see much takedown. So yeah, I, I think there's better options this week than a guy like Kevin Jusay. All right, guys, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor, leave a like on your way out, subscribe to the channel, check out dfsbythenumbers.com. All the content is ready to go for this week. And then also check out Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code at DFSBTN. Best of luck, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. See